Welcome to this behind the scenes episode brought to you by Kalari Capital. Today we have with us Abhijit Bobby Bose, head of India WhatsApp. I've known Bobby for a long time and I'm really excited to have his insights and learnings shared with us today. Bobby was also the co-founder of EasyTap, a pioneering digital payments company in India. Bobby, welcome to this uh, behind the scenes episode with Kalari Capital. I really I'm grateful for the time that you're taking to share your knowledge, wisdom, and uh, uh, insights. Uh, uh, so shall we start? Yeah, thanks, Mani. It's a pleasure to be here. Bobby, you know, from the first time I met you, which was many years ago, uh, when you were building EasyTap, you know, I've seen you really build uh, great products, um, scale the business, and uh, uh, build teams to make that happen. So, you know, I want to first start from being a startup founder, how can you build scale thinking from day one? What do you need to do to ensure scale can happen even when you're a young company? Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. Uh, and of course, everybody's journey is different and it, it depends. Uh, scale means many things to many different types of companies. But, you know, as I reflect, I, I think kind of at an abstract level, there were probably four things that um, you know, I would give advice to any aspiring founder and just from my own experience. Um, and I'll try and use an example uh, of, for each one of them. Uh, first, you know, from day one, I remember at EasyTap and anywhere, just being mar- market driven. Like any founder will come into an office, they'll have a cute, clear vision of what they wanna do, how they wanna change the world. So that conviction has to be there. But uh, one of the things that worked really well for us was just being open and questioning, asking the whys and hows from early on. So in fact, um, our first sales call at EasyTap was when I barely had a demo. We didn't build a product. It was, uh, I always used to say, listen, sell first, build later. And that sales give you that signal. So having your feedback loop with customers um, is really, really important. Uh, the example I'll give, you know, we were called the Square of India and that Square was pretty hot and it's still a phenomenal company. Um, and the obvious thing to do was just say, great, Square's model, Indian market, everybody's mobile penetrated, cut, paste. Um, it wasn't until we actually started sitting in front of people and saying, uh, okay, banks, should we go to banks? Should we go to enterprises? Should we go large? Should we go small? Did we realize that there was fundamental issues in our, from our perspective on the model? Just the, the margins weren't there. And we found that out very quickly when we realized that instead of talking about a percentage point of profit, we were talking about 10 bips. And uh, you, I don't know if you'll remember all of these type of pitches. I remember pitching a scale business and my spreadsheet was you know, 10,000 rows long because you just couldn't get to 100 millions of revenue with whatever assumptions you did. So that feedback loop forced us to question a lot of the incoming assumptions and it led us to change a lot of things. And I think we were pretty innovative at the time. Um, we were the first to say, listen, it's probably in India gonna be about a software as a service. It's gonna be about integrated solutions and how do we solve business problems? And that's gonna create stickiness. Um, so that feedback loop, getting and selling and getting that hardcore signal first and being adaptive, I think is really, really important. Um, the second thing though, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult balance. Um, but I think it's important as you think about scaling a team was just once you kind of do your diligence, just having a focus in a North star and just clearly, this is what we're about. This is the principles and the, and the problem that we're trying to solve for this target customer. Um, and I know, you know, easy tap days were there when I was kind of early, but I think WhatsApp does it better than anything I've ever seen, which is our promise to our customers are four things. It's simplicity, reliability, security, and privacy. And product design, policies, decisions, how we kind of look at trade-offs are all kind of weighed against that. And we have a lot of opportunities, but um, it makes it really easy for you to prioritize in early days and also prioritize at scale as well when that's really clear. So we're going to never trade off anything that doesn't deliver impact, of course, but if it in any way dilutes any of those four things. And so it makes it super easy to kind of create a framework for scale and making sure that you bring the team along um, as long as you, if you have that North Star. And it's not just having it, not just being able to pitch it to 
VCs or others, but it's being able to articulate it clearly to your team. I think that's that's number two. So kind of a focus and a clear articulation of what you're about. Um, the third one, I think you might have been in the room for this story, but uh, I think founders have to be thinking about scale and next stages, even on day zero. Mm -hmm. So while you're here and now, every journey, as we all know, has different phases. There's the zero to one, and then there's kind of kind of the growth hacking, and then there's kind of hyperscale. And the muscles that you're going to need to flex are different. The team you're going to need to build are different. But you also, I think, uh, need to execute today, keep the team focused on today. But I think it's the promoter's job and the leadership's job to say, okay, what does the next stage and the next stage look like? What does 10X look like? And not just what am I going to need, not can I articulate it in kind of qualitative, but let's talk metrics. And I remember I was in a pitch with a very well-known investor and I, you know, here's what our, here's what we're about. Here's our product. Here's our revenue per user. And by the way, if we did X number of users, we'd get a hundred million dollars, something like that. It was some chart. And I remember he really wasn't paying attention, but he, he woke up, he walked to the screen and he, he pointed to that hundred million. And he said, uh, when, when are you going to get there and how are you going to get there quicker? And, you know, that was just, yeah, we're here now. We can eventually get there, but this is just to kind of frame the picture. But I reflected on it and I said, no, that's that's your job. Your job is to understand the how. And the right answer should have been, listen, this is how we how we think we're going to get there. This is what the metrics look like. This is why we're going to do it. And by the way, if I turn this engine or took in this money, I could get there quicker. So you should be thinking about what scale looks like, um, at least in your mind, so that you kind of aren't going too far off course. So I think that would be number three. And then number four, um, which has worked out well for EasyTap, is uh, hire a great team. It doesn't need to be a big team, but um, you know this. Our CFO, and, and for me, it was the CFO uh, who we hired, who became the CEO of EasyTap. But what was more important than just having that leadership and having the finance, a promoter by nature is always going to be about growth. How do I grow faster? We should be invest. This is the greatest thing. You need that counterbalance. And who's in the trenches? It's not the board. It's that person who's in the trenches with you. It's like time out. Let's make sure that we're kind of balancing these things so you can really create a balance for you. And, and it, it allows you to kind of run the company, have the right debates, but also kind of run it for the long term. So I would, I think those four lessons from my experience um, played out, have led to whatever we did. And I think they're pretty transferable. And that's what I would tell somebody if they came to me. I think, I think so aligned with many of the things you said. Um, I feel very fortunate to be in India at this time. Uh, Bobby, you probably would share that same sentiment. We are in one of the fastest growing digital economies globally. How do you feel about what's uh, happening on the ground uh, in India from opportunity? I think this is one of the most exciting places to be. Uh, and it's taken time to just hit. I, uh, I was pretty well entrenched in the Bay Area in the 2000 time frame, And then, you know, my wife and I just picked up and moved in 2005. Um, I literally moved, got rid of my apartment, moved into my brother-in-law's basement for six months. And let's say figured out how to get here because we felt like this was the place to be. Um, and for certain profiles, I think India is probably the, is way more interesting than Silicon Valley in some senses because you've got so many trends converging at the same time. And a lot of us were waiting over the last 10 years, but I think it really is coming where um, we've got a couple factors going for us. Um, I think we've got an ecosystem that is very innovative. And I think the quality of founders and the kind of innovation that's happening in the different products that are out there are amazing. And I was there in the embryonic stages, even in NG pay days, you know, five years before EasyTap, right? So when you could fit all the Bangalore startups in one, hotel conference room. Um, so you've got a great ecosystem. I think uh, the consumer is now more digitally savvy. We obviously have the mobile penetration and the, and the kind of internet bandwidth penetration in place. We all know that. I think India stack is, is really powerful. I mean, you can't overstate how far ahead it is. So the ability to plug and play and kind of make sure that these core services like identity and payments really are kind of interoperable and kind of standardized it, it's huge. It takes so much friction out of out of what's going on. And then you've got the rails. So you've got platforms uh, in place that are going to allow you to kind of open up access and the convergence of all and funding, of course. So 
the convergence of all of this means that um, I think the next five years, you're going to see the ability to scale innovative micro solutions in India that have not been seen anywhere else in the world. Either developed markets maybe haven't had that need. We have the need to get micro insurance, for example, or micro pensions to the bottom of the pyramid. And the cost structures just never made sense. But now you could actually flip those equations. Um, and other countries that do have the same pain points we do don't have the infrastructure and kind of the dynamics that we do. So whether it's kind of digitizing kind of rural India, whether it's kind of really bringing in and configuring microservices, both innovation on the product side, rapidly scaling and removing kind of cost structures on the distribution side, um, this is going to be revolutionary. I mean, I think we can change in five years the health parameters of the country, the financial inclusion parameters of the country, and that's just on the social impact side. There's going to be brand new business models. So I think that's phenomenal. Uh, to take advantage of it, you have to have a certain DNA um, as a company and as a person. Uh, but uh, it's it's really exciting. How do you personally measure success for your projects? And how do you get your team to uh, you know align to that success focus, right? Because you talked about DNA, one aspect of the DNA is yeah. uh, knowing what you want and how to get everybody to uh, follow to what you want. I think the team and company angle is number one. Um, number two is the business angle, which is probably the most kind of easy to, to quantify. Um, and third is kind of by stage also. So first of all, every stage, what you're gonna be measuring is gonna be different. So when you're kind of going from zero to one, it's gonna be more qualitative. So it is, more about vision, are we aligned? Are we hitting milestones? And is that success? Um, and you're gonna have to celebrate those. I think once you're live, you know, for us, um, it's about impact. And I, I go back to what I was saying before. I think there's a certain set of metrics which you can measure, whether it's revenue or transaction volumes or whatever they are, um, which are important to measure. Uh, but I think it's really important to know what are the metrics that are going to move the needle? Make sure they're front and center. Make sure you've explained it to the team. Like, hey, we need to drive X, you know, if I'm using the Facebook analogy we used before, we need to drive kind of users to get more friends and do this behavior. This is why this is important because it leads to engagement and kind of a long running business. Um, in the easy tap example I gave you, it wasn't just what's our transaction volume and how many customers have we signed. It was Guys, we got a knockoff churn. Why is it that people are leaving us or not leaving us? We need to understand it. So measuring the right things, communicating it will make sure people get aligned. And then you can actually start measuring people against metrics. So that's just how I would kind of unpack the concept of metrics because it can get really superficial really quickly. What's revenue? What's our customer? What's our volume? Done. The other thing is just from a team point of view, we, and I think I've kind of appreciated this more the further we've gone on the journey is just employee engagement. Um, Cause there comes a point where a small team can disproportionately drive it. But if you're trying to scale teams and if we're talking in that context, you have to A, again, North Star, B, explain why we're doing it and kind of how people can align around what, what they're being measured against or what we're measuring against. But C, just making sure they're engaged. Um, and there's objective ways of doing it. We take a pulse and we're all measured at on how our employee engagement is um, at Facebook. And I think a lot of companies do that. So success is also building a team that can scale um, your ability to bring people who are bringing energy into the venture and the journey and not kind of riding or taking it away. And it's really important because this is what's gonna kind of drag and create huge friction down the road. So I think that's something that you should be measuring or at least figuring out how, how to kind of keep your pulse on. Um, Finally, for me, Vani, you know, and it's at a personal level, it's just how do you get energy to go through the and be resilient, right? These are going to be hard times. It's never an easy journey, whatever you do, whether it's large company or small. It's, if you wake up and feeling you're doing something with your innings now that really has impact, that you're proud of, it kind of is worth your time. And that's for everybody. Um, and you feel proud about what you do, and that's it. So I, that's a very introspective way of thinking about it, but only that's going to give you the energy to kind of push through the really, really tough times. Um, and if you wake up and you feel like I'm doing something big, 
however you kind of figure that out, I think it's really important, especially for entrepreneurs. Um, what's a piece of advice that you'd like to pass on to aspiring founders or founders of startups today? In, well, number one, enjoy it. Um, it. So it's such a special time to be an entrepreneur in India in this moment. Um, I came here 15 years ago waiting for this moment and we've kind of been here and I think all of us have, right? So. Uh, what I see happening in India and in Bangalore in particular blows my mind. I'm just amazed at the quality of companies and ideas. And as I said, this convergence, uh, I've been in Silicon Valley. I've seen MNCs that are very successful. I'm seeing kind of what the opportunity is at, at scale. And also, you know, when you're in a company that's focused in one area, um, this is a once in a generation opportunity. And I, it's very hard for, I think, people to really understand unless you've been in the Valley, unless with you, you've seen so many companies over so much time. I feel this is a special time and they should really take advantage of it because it's it's really, really unique. Um, so number one, enjoy it. Um, number two, uh, find your, as we said, find your inner motivation and make sure this is what you want to do to, because, and find your, find your, find your team. Because you have to be comfortable internally. You have to be comfortable at home. You have to be comfortable with your team because this is all getting in the boat together. And this is not going to be uh, always a hockey stick journey. And it's only through that where you're going to have the right people kind of pressure testing your assumptions, making sure that your conviction keeps driving and accelerating the company, but you're also kind of not doing it in an unsustainable way. Um, and allowing you to kind of you know, manage this and kind of build this for the long term uh, so that you don't kind of burn yourself out. I think it's really, really important. Um, so those would be my two things is you're going to need the resilience and you're also going to need people uh, to celebrate with as you yeah, kind of hit, right. your, hit your milestones. So so one personal question, if I may ask, right? Of course. Generally, people don't cross lines, meaning that coming, we believe that people coming from corporate can't really succeed in a startup. And likewise, there is the reverse. So people coming from a startup can't really succeed in a large uh, organization, but you've crossed the lines both ways. So yeah. how, do you, how do you do it? What's special? It kind of goes back to what you asked me earlier. If I see the opportunity and it again resonates, uh, you know, leaving your own company that you helped start and built and nurtured like a, almost like a child, uh, in fact, Easy Tap started just as my second son was born. So, as, as my wife says, like, yeah, it's like two kids at the same time. And even NG Pan, I think I joined them when my first son was born. So, two startups, two kids at roughly the same time. Um, uh, the opportunity resonated with me because I think Easy Tap was in great hands, great funders. I think we knew what we were doing. And um, I felt WhatsApp for me, and I've said this publicly before, was just the chance to change the country at scale. Uh, I mean, humbly, it just it, it was an opportunity to kind of really move needles in a big way. And I think it was, so it, it wasn't about crossing corporate startup. It was really kind of what I wanted to do. Did it align with kind of A, my skill set? So obviously you got to do stuff that you can, you can do. Um, so hopefully successfully, but was it the right thing for me at the right time? And, and did it kind of kind of hit my motivation. And, and and each was a challenge, by the way. Working in a startup and running a startup uh, is two different things. Um, you know, working at a corporate and then kind of taking this role is also <laughs> very, very different. So I was also somebody, this is my personality, um, keep pushing because um, I wanted to kind of keep growing. So uh, it, it definitely, I will say, it was, it's been a fabulous journey, but it's one that I've run a lot in the last two and a half years in this job. So that's it. So it was really less about kind of what sector, but more about what I was going into, who I was working with, and really kind of what, what I could do when I got there. Abhi, I know you bring a lot of inspiration to founders, investors, and to the whole overall, you know, tech ecosystem in India. So I really appreciate you making this time and this uh, conversation was fantastic. Thank you again. It's always a pleasure, Vani. Thank you, and thank you for everything we do. None of us could be there without the ecosystem and that you represent. You've been part of this for a long time as well. So 
So it goes both ways. Thanks very much for having me.